our universe is rife with possibilities, full of fascinating mysteries and even a few dangers. Stepping out into the night to see the inky black void with thousands of bright spots that all died years ago pushes one into contemplation. What else is out there? Beneath that tranquil blanket hide astronomical phenomena of incredible rarity and unfathomable violence. There are things out there in the universe that are potentially life-threatening, things that could not only destroy Earth but even the entire solar system, and we wander this universe, passing by black holes, pulsars, and neutron stars constantly, never more than a few light years away from them. The latter makes for the most extreme objects identified in the universe, and one of their classifications, the magnetar, is perhaps the most dangerous. Although we don't know much about them, it is believed that magnetars are a type of neutron star born of the supernova explosion. Although both are similar in formation, they hold some distinct characteristics that set them apart. Magnetars rotate slower, usually once every 8 to 10 seconds, as opposed to one rotation a second in the case of neutron stars. But the danger they pose doesn't come from speed. It is estimated that the magnetic field of a magnetar would be lethal to human life at distances up to 620 miles or 1,000 kilometers from the star. These magnetic fields are hundreds of millions of times stronger than any man-made magnet and quadrillions of times more powerful than the field surrounding Earth. A magnetar located halfway between the Earth and the Moon would destroy the ozone layer and wipe out all data in every credit card in the world. Fortunately, Magnetars are quite rare. Currently, the theory is that out of every 10 supernovae, only one becomes a magnetar. So far, scientists have only been able to detect 16 of these fascinating objects with the help of the Chandra X-ray telescope. The next biggest threat out there in the universe is actually imminent in 5 billion years. The collision of our galaxy with Andromeda. The latest data suggests that our neighboring galaxy is approaching us at about 72 miles or 116 kilometers per second. Calling it a galactic collision is perhaps a kinder term. What really happens is known as a galactic cannibalism. In the event of such collisions, often the smaller galaxy is eaten by the larger. Andromeda has twice the mass of the Milky Way, and at its center is a supermassive black hole 30 million times the size of our Sun. Suffice to say, we would not be the victors. Our planet would either be thrown into the outskirts of our home or burnt by stars moving at speeds of 994,000 miles or 1.6 million kilometers per hour. Perhaps the most dangerous thing in our universe is one that lies in our own home, the Sun, the center of our solar system. Though it provides us with heat, light, and essentially life, even the brightest stars have a dark side. Sunspots are dark areas on the surface of the Sun, which form when fluctuations occur in the Sun's magnetic field. The spots are dark because they are significantly cooler than any other parts of the solar surface, but cooler is a relative term in this case. The Sun is 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 6,000 degrees Celsius. In contrast, a piping hot sunspot will be about 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 4,500 degrees Celsius. Solar flares or storms are gigantic explosions associated with these sunspots, caused by the sudden release of energy from twists in the sun's magnetic field. They are intense bursts of radiation that can last from mere minutes to hours. While solar storms pose no such threat to us, aside from disrupting our technologies, they can seriously harm an astronaut not under the protection of the Earth's atmosphere. The worst one Earth has faced was in 1859, the Carrington event. During the 10th solar cycle, several sunspots had appeared on the Sun from August 28, 1859. The result of this was worldwide sightening of the Aurora Borealis, with the lights being observed as far as Queensland in Australia. Richard Carrington independently recorded the earliest observations of a solar flare associated with a major coronal mass ejection or CMEs, that had traveled directly to Earth. It had traveled close to 18 hours to make the 93 million mile or 150 million kilometer journey. Another flare on the 1st and 2nd September caused telegraph systems all over Europe and North America to fail. 
in some cases giving operators electric shocks, telegraph pylons through sparks. Some telegraph operators found they could continue to send and receive messages despite having disconnected their power supplies. But a Carrington event is the best case scenario where our sun is concerned. Because solar storms are not all we have to worry about, our sun is still quite young, relatively speaking, and its future is bright, perhaps too bright. The sun is slowly expanding and brightening, and over the next few billion years, it will eventually desiccate Earth, leaving it hot, brown, and inhabitable. If we are not engulfed in flames, chances are when the sun starts to lose its gravitational hold on its planets in the solar system, we might drift away from our solar envelopment and be lost in space, untethered to any star or home. Needless to say, the planet will become inhospitable. At the end of their lives, not all stars end up as black holes. Many that don't have the mass to create a black hole will die as a much more spectacular, albeit violent death. Once a star has run out of fuel, it will begin to compress to the point the nuclear forces of the particles inside it are able to stop the contraction. At that stage, new nuclear reactions start, ending with a cascade of neutrinos that literally blows up the star. And this is a supernova. At the center of this explosion is a stellar corpse, a neutron star with incredible density. Neutron stars can be found alone or in double systems, with one star orbiting around another. This waltz lasts billions of years, but over time, the stars come closer and closer together, and when they finally collide, both their extreme density and their velocity produce the largest known explosion in the universe, a kilonova. It is so great, in fact, that the blast can be seen billions of light years away. Two jets of gamma rays emerge from the explosion, and if one were to hit Earth directly, it would blast our planet with lethal levels of radiation, stripping away our atmosphere, which would eventually lead to mass extinction. The process generates about a thousand times more energy than a supernova. Even if we were not in its beam path, the force of its explosion would be so strong that we would detect them on Earth as gravitational waves. These events are such that they generate a disturbance in space-time itself, the fabric that makes up reality. The most common fear we all share is the fear of the unknown. What happens inside a black hole remains a mystery to the brightest minds in the universe. All we know is there's no coming back from it. Black holes are massive cosmic beasts, and their gravitational pull is so strong that anything that gets pulled in cannot escape, not even light. And because of that, they're not easy to spot in the endless darkness of space. There may be hundreds of them in our galaxy alone. Rogue One's around 600 million times the mass of the Sun, likely those that got kicked away when galaxies collided. They cannot be spotted, and they move at a speed of 110,000 miles or 177 kilometers per hour. If a rogue black hole is hurtling towards Earth, it will most certainly tear our solar system apart and pull everything into the darkness, and not knowing what will happen to the solar system after that is enough to deem it dangerous. These events likely will not occur for another few billion years. And who knows where our progress in space travel will be at that point. But nevertheless, cosmic events are sadly something humanity has no control over. These occurrences are maybe not the worst of what is out there in the boundless space. But what makes them dangerous is that we can do nothing about them. But perhaps that's a good thing. We have conquered quite a lot in our world and some worlds beyond but having limitations is ultimately what makes us human.